I'd like to introduce Libby Richies, who's come up from Apollo Bay um, to speak today about social media. Um, Libby is a land care facilitator for the Southern Otway Land Care Network, um, and her background's actually in archaeology, and she's made a bit of a shift from cultural resource management to natural resource management. Um, and now, with a bit of focus on online communications, I'll let her tell you a bit more about that, though. Okay, hello, thank you. Um, I think I exhausted all my energy getting enthusiastic in the other room, so hopefully, um, hopefully I'm still going. And I've got to finish logging in here so I can show you all what's going on, so um, bear with me for a moment. Um, as Amber said, I'm the facilitator with the Southern Otway Land Care Network. Uh, I've worked there for two years now, doing that role. Um, but previously, uh, I was an archaeologist, um, most of the work I did was uh, in what we called social value significance. So it was um, assessing the value of landscapes to people and the way that, um, that people and community connect to each other and to the landscape around them um, in a way that we could then take that information and attempt to understand how to manage those places in response to that kind of connection. Um, what it did for me was give me um, a real passion for working with communities. Uh, I was very fortunate um, to work with Gunditch Mara in southwestern Victoria for, on a large number of projects over a long period of time and saw a really interesting community in action there, interesting in a whole number of ways. Um, when I came to Southern Otway's Land Care Network, um, I brought a real love of those things with me. So for me, land care is not about plants, it's about people. It's about, not just about engaging community, which is what we always talk about, and it, it's, quite, it's quite a self-serving way, in my mind, to, to talk about community. When you talk about community engagement, it's saying, this is my agenda, come to my table and engage with me. I'm not interested in that, and, and largely I'm finding that that's completely failing to work anyway, even if we wanted to do it. Um, I'm interested in building community uh, and finding out what it is that they want in all its messy complexity and all its, all its difficulty. Um, for those of us who work um, in land care, um, we spend a lot of time hearing from people above us, you know, and they tell us what it is we should be doing. You know, you must have regional scale projects. You must be doing biodiversity planting. You must be doing carbon farming. You must be doing soil health. You must be partnering with other networks. You must be doing this, that and the other. Uh, or there'll be no money for you. Um, and I'm not saying that that doesn't reflect a genuine economic reality. But from my perspective, sitting in an office, it makes you panic. And it makes you go, oh my god, we have to find this stuff. These are the things that we have to do. And what you do is that you stop listening to community. You stop listening to what people actually want, not where the money's coming from, but what actually means something to them. Um, I'll get around to how this relates to social media in a minute, trust me, it, it, it does work. Um, and, that, and then all of a sudden you look up one day and you go, nobody's engaging in land care anymore. Why isn't anybody interested in land care? So, well, maybe it's because we stopped listening to what people actually want and we got so focused on where the money's coming from and what the federal government tells us what we should be doing and what the state government tells us what we should be doing and what the catchment tells us we should be doing. Um, and nobody actually cares, you know. <laughs> so for me, the real joy of social media is not in talking to people, it's in listening to people and finding out what it is that they're doing and what it is that they want to see happen. Um, I'm going to do the standard social media presentation thing of saying, of asking for hands up of how many people are on Facebook and how many people have a, a page for their organisation and how many people administrate or manage that. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same split as the other room, which is interesting. Um, and Twitter, who's on Twitter? Yeah, a few more Twitterers in here than in the other. Uh, okay, what I am not going to do today is um, 
tell you how to run a Facebook page or how to set up a Twitter account or any of that stuff. If I do that, you will walk out of here A, relentlessly bored, and B, you will probably also forget by the time you get back to your computer. So Amber Croft uh, is more than willing to take any phone calls from you. She will organise whatever assistance you need to set up any of these things if you decide that, uh, that you want to go down that path. Um, what I want you to think about today is why you might use social media and particularly how your community is, is talking. Um, communities are, you know, in some ways they're all different um, and in some ways they're all the same as well, but um, they have different priorities and different needs and I'm trying to talk and type, so, which is really not working for me. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about my community of Apollo Bay, if this computer ever lets me go there, um, and what it's like and what its needs are um, and what its particular sets of issues are. I'm going to bring up the satellite because that's quite telling. So um, for those of you, is that doing something? Okay, good. There we go. For those of you who don't know, um, Apollo Bay is just off Cape Otway. And Cape Otway is the second most southerly point in Victoria. Okay. Um, the Southern Otway Landcare Network extends from about here to about here. That's actually only about 80 kilometres across. Um, the network looks like this. Right? We are called the Southern Otway Landcare Network because our entire network perches on the southern face of the Otway Ranges and looks out over the Southern Ocean. Um, incredibly steep country. Um, up the top here we have an average rainfall of two metres a year. Um, on the coast, in the dry bits, it's about eight to 900 mils a year. Really steeply dissected gullies, wet forest, bits of remnant rainforest. Um, all the private land basically clusters on that southern face. We're surrounded by um, National Park out the back here and we sit on the Great Ocean Road which is um, a National Heritage List place, a fact which seems to have completely failed to deliver us any kind of management benefit, which is a little bit unexpected. Anyway, so this is all National Park, all of this. Uh, we have four groups in our network. This is the Horton Vale Glen Eyre Landcare Group. Um, and this is also our flat land. So we have a floodplain here that's about 20 kilometres long and it's the bit without a hill, basically. Um, we have some mm, two or three productive farmers down there. Uh, it's beef cattle and it's fat lamb. Um, it used to be dairying. Uh, it no longer is. The reason, one of the reasons it no longer is is that if you've ever been to Apollo Bay, you'll be aware that it's only two, two hours from Geelong, 180 kilometres from Geelong, but you are one hour on either the Great Ocean Road or the Cape Otway Road, which is extremely difficult, extremely windy. Um, people don't, don't like it. They don't like to drive it, basically. In fact, recently I was um, at an archaeological dig a bit further up the coast and we had all these bureaucrats came down from Melbourne to see the site and they all rolled out of the car and threw up. They couldn't deal with the, with the road down, you know. So we can't get stuff out of here easily. So our farmers have very limited access to markets outside of Apollo Bay. And we have very limited access uh, to markets coming into Apollo Bay. So, so it is, it's, it's quite a substantially remote community. But we do still have a bit of production ag down here. Um, Apollo Bay here has two land care groups. One is the Otway Barham Catchment Group. And it's focused around... Um, the catchment, the Barham River, which is the water supply for the town, and then um, the Apollo Bay group, which is kind of this half here. Um, that's a, a pretty standard mix of um, full-time residents plus part-time residents. Excuse me, I'm a little bit breathless as I say, I think I just expended all my energy in the other room, so bear with me. Um, up here is the White Wangara Land Care Group, and they are almost entirely part-time residents, basically. We have one or two people, literally, who live there permanently. Um, and so what this, this produces two situations for us. One is a land management situation, and that is that 
We've got lots of properties that are about 100 to 160 acres. Um, they're very expensive to manage, they're very difficult to manage, and very often they're not managed either for conservation or for production. So they're weed infested, they're going to ruin. Um, and when people talk about the rolling green hills behind Apollo Bay and it's like island and, you know, uh, we look at that and go weed infested disaster. And we've got to figure out what to do with that. Um, so we're trying to communicate to, to all of these people, basically, in a way that addresses their needs and, and is effective. Um, so we, have, we use a few, a few tools, I guess. Um, the first one is really low tech and one that I strongly encourage. We have two local news sheets in town. Uh, they are published weekly. Uh, we don't have to edit them or put them together or do anything. So every week we write a column, basically, and everybody in town reads the news sheet. You just, just everybody in town reads the news sheet. And that's great because it, um, it connects with a, a whole diversity of people, not just land carers. And it's easy for us to do, just, just something we churn out. Um, so never forget the low tech, basically, uh, and always, Always look for those options. The other thing that is, with, with this stuff here, that's really important to point out, is that um, the township of Apollo Bay here, it's a little area of flat about this big, um, is the only area that has mobile phone reception in our area. Um, it's also the only part of the network area that has anything resembling internet connection that's affordable and accessible. So as soon as you get out of Apollo Bay, there's no broadband. It's all dial-up or 3G or highly expensive satellite broadband that nobody can afford to run. So um, we have to make sure that we don't make any of our electronic communications too heavy on people's use patterns. Um, having said that, we do run a very successful, um, I guess, communications platform through a variety of methods. The, um, the big one, the engine room, is our, um, is our website, basically. Um, we use a system called WordPress. I don't know if any of you are familiar with WordPress. Um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful little system. You can get a cheap website knocked up really easily. And I'll just try and log in. Um, and it's self-managed. So you can just add content really, really easily, provided you can actually access the thing. Um, but, but in essence, is as simple as, um, as uh, using your email. So as I said to the other group, if you can actually remember my username and password from watching me do this, then um, all the luck in the world to you. You're more than welcome to go in and add content to the Solon website. <laughs> yes, that's right. You could say six dots, actually. Um, okay, you're going to log me in. No, I don't want you to remember my password. Okay, so this is the back end of the WordPress website. Um, now, most of this stuff I never think about. I know how to use it, and, and I should be up front here and say that I'm married to a web developer, so um, although I'm, uh, you know, five years ago I was a complete Luddite, and in fact would get anxiety attacks just checking email. Um, uh, things, things have largely changed for me. Um, and I do have someone who I can say, Pete, how do I? You know, and then he gets grumpy, but he shows me anyway. So um, I am very lucky in that. So I, I, I you know, I, I don't, you do need some level of tech literacy to manage these things. Um, but Basically, the only button I ever use, unless I'm really fiddling around with it, is this one that says Posts and Add New. And then you just type your title, you type your text. There are some other things there that you can do if you want, but you don't have to. And then you hit Publish and you're done. So it is exactly, it is as simple as using your email. In fact, there are a lot less buttons than your email, so I, I really like it. The thing that we do have on this website is a subscriber list, so that every single time we put something out on the website, all our subscribers get a notification in their email box. Um, we have about 700 subscribers to the website. Uh, I think 
about 400 of those are robots from the Ukraine. Um, and I don't know why they subscribe to our website, but they do. About 300 of them are actual people. Uh, a lot of them are our part-time residents. So they're people in Melbourne who, who have bandwidth and have computers who work and who are not reliant on dial-up internet and, and who use this technology. So, so that's really good for us. We can connect with those people quite well through, through this system. Um, so the, um, the WordPress system, oh, what have I done? The WordPress system is um, largely a blog. There we go. Uh, it, we have it set up so that our home page here stays pretty much static. And this is a small portion of our landscape that isn't covered with wet forest and has actual livestock on it, um, with basically 50% um, of our productive farmers in that picture. And, and, and one of them's a guest, by the way. So, um, so this is pretty much what our landscape looks like. This is gentle, the gentle rolling hills bit of the Otway Ranges, not the screaming precipices that, that characterise most of the network. So it's set on our homepage, uh, but we have um, uh, a, uh, a blog section of it where all the stuff goes to automatically when it's published more quickly than, um, than this is going to run. And let's just see if it gets there. There you go. It thinks it's doing something. Anyway, we, um, it, all, it all feeds out through this website and, and people, here we go. So this is what's, um, what's been going out on our website recently. Um, I try not to load out too much content on this website. People get sick of it. They don't want to see stuff in their email inbox all the time. They just don't want to, and, and I don't blame them. No matter how fascinating the habits of the bubis bison winter active dung beetle may be, um, I don't want to be loading their, their box up with this information all the time. Uh, so this has really good reach, and, um, and so here, this, this is a good example. Uh, we recently went through uh, both a major strategic planning process and annual reporting. Uh, and we sent out both of those documents to our entire subscriber list. We haven't produced anything physically this year. Um, the website is, uh, is where we put our heavy content. If we've got lots of words or lots of documents or lots of complex ideas, it goes out on the website. It's like a, you know, a handout, basically. It's a virtual handout. And that makes it quite, quite different to the other things that we use. Um, OK, so. The other thing we use is Facebook. OK. So um, what you need to understand about uh, having a Facebook page is that an actual person, uh, and I'm just flicking it over to my personal profile because it's a bit less personal than the stuff that goes through my feed, um, is that you need an actual person with an actual profile to actually set up your Facebook page. So if you're thinking you can have a Facebook page but not have anything to do with Facebook yourself, you're misguided, basically. So uh, I, Libby Richards, set up pages and groups and all kinds of things from my, my profile. So that's, that's lesson one. Um, so this is, this is me. Oh, hang on. What's going on there? There we go. I'm not very good with these. Um, there we go. So these um, your little keypad track things. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I always get these two buttons around the wrong way. See, I've been using this forever, and I still don't know what I'm doing half the time. It's just banging buttons like a monkey. Um, OK, so this is the, these are all the pages that, um, that I administrate, basically. Um, and these are groups that I belong to. And, I, and I'm going to talk more about these later because I think this is where the action is and this is where people should be. In, in my area, this is where people are focused and I think this is a really great thing. So, but here are my pages. So we can go to the Southern Otway Landcare page. Okay. All right. So this is, this is us. Now, what I want you to notice about, if you're not a Facebook user, about the Landcare page, is that um, every time you see this logo here and it says Southern Otway Landcare Network, um, you are seeing what I have posted. So it is like me standing in front of you and talking to you and saying what I think 
And every now and then someone might put up their hand and say something, but in all honesty, they probably won't, which leaves me feeling like I'm speaking to a room of people who aren't interested and wondering what the hell I'm doing here, right? So a Facebook page can be a lot like that. And I'd be prepared to bet that a lot of people in Landcare who've set up Facebook pages feel a bit like that. They've maybe got a few dozen likes, um, they've put a few things out there, nobody's really said anything much, and you're sort of wondering, why am I doing this? You know, everyone's telling me I should be doing this, so I do it, but I'm not really sure it's, it's giving me anything. It's like, um, it's like the way the Catchment Management Authority keeps telling us in Karangamite, you must get philanthropic and corporate funding. It's like, well, yes, we know we must, but it's not working. We're trying, you know. It's like that. You can try and try and try, but not much seems to happen. And, and I think that that's because it's this, um, it's virtual lecturing, basically. And people have limited interest in that, in all honesty. Um, and the other thing is with pages is that, that Facebook doesn't really like your page to communicate with other people. So it will ask you to do things like pay it money to make sure that your page gets out, or it will require people to, um, to actively participate in your page in order to promote it through the feed more. We're doing pretty well just at the moment. The reason we're doing okay, actually, is because before um, three days ago, this page had 126 likes. Uh, we now have 166, which means that the page considers itself to be extremely active. Um, what I did was I went to, to one of my groups, which I'm gonna talk to you about, uh, in a minute and said, I'm going to be talking at the Northeast Catchment Management Authority Conference on Friday about how great this group is <laughs> and, um, and I want to show them that, that the Southern Otway Landcare Network page looks really, really good. So, you know, I'm pimping for likes. Can you like it? And I got 40 likes in, in 40 hours. Uh, and that is not because of this page, it's because of the group that, that I was communicating to. So now I'm going to show you a group uh, and just remember, when you were looking at that page, you saw all of those things that were, um, that were things that the Southern Otway Landcare Network had posted. Um, so this is a group. Um, this is a, a group that I set up a couple of years ago now. Um, the reason I set it up was because um, our local news sheet are fascists basically, in my opinion, and um, they don't like communities to have too much to say, and they don't like it if that's a little political or dubious, and they don't like it if you have more than 10 centimetres column depth, and they don't like it if you put more than three things in a month, and, and not only in Southern Otway Landcare, but all the community groups are getting really sick of it, <laughs> basically. Um, and so I set up this thing as an experiment in an unedited virtual news sheet. Um, there is no editorial control here at all unless somebody does something really horribly wrong and the only person who's ever done anything really horribly wrong is me anyway. So, um, so I've had to edit myself on occasion but, but largely everyone else is extremely well behaved. So the thing that you will see about the group is that um, all the posts are just from the members of the group. They're not from Southern Otway Landcare. They're not from anyone. Um, you post, there's all kinds of things in here. Uh, this is where I posted uh, about likes um, for the page. I might even be able to find that somewhere down here. Um, and, and so it's, um, it's an uncontrolled conversation space, basically. And it connects to 530 people in our town of 1,300 people. Um, which, is, which is really great. Uh, so here we go. Um, this is the post I put up a few days ago um, and uh, got really great response. I also put it in another group uh, called the Ballarat Permaculture Guild, which is outside of my area but is a fantastic resource of technical knowledge on, on permaculture and has a very vibrant community of people sharing skills and knowledge. Um, so. Now when I'm promoting land care stuff, I might do it through my page, but more often than not, I do it through here, because this is where my actual community is. Um, 
And I, I'm talking to a whole heap of people I wouldn't normally otherwise get a chance to talk to. Um, groups are, are great. They're completely horizontal. You know, there's no uh, decision-making controls or anything like that. It's just a group of people talking and, and sharing their, their ideas. When we went through our um, recent rate, uh, process of strategic planning, we fed a lot of stuff out through this page. Uh, and we continue to do so in, in a large number of ways, collecting information, understanding what people want. Um, we find ourselves quite um, constantly surprised these days, which is really nice. Um, uh, an example was, um, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago I went to see um, Joel Salatin, the farmer, polyface farmer in um, Bendigo, and, and I wrote some articles about it and published them through this. And I had people calling me for about two weeks, just picking up the phone and going, and I'm talking traditional farmers, people who a couple of years ago would have said, he's just some freaky permaculture weirdo, ringing up and saying, that's great, how can we learn more? How can we get him down? Can you get some books into the library? Can we organise a visit to Taranaki Farm, which is the farm in Woodend, which is applying these principles in practice? Um, can we get regional development money to start up a community enterprise based on these things? How can I get people working my land? All of this kind of stuff. It's a conversation that we wouldn't previously have had. And it was, and, and it was coming from, from all quarters. And, and that's when you know that things are, are working too, by the way, because I think anyone who does communications 90% of the time you're absolutely convinced that nobody is listening. And then you make a spelling mistake in a grammatical error and 50 people call you up. Um, or you say something a bit off and people call you up. Or you say something really interesting. And, and suddenly you're realising that the people are interested in a bigger array of things than you imagined. And another little weird thing that we had recently was... Um, I mentioned something about how one of the community houses was going to be doing a, um, a chainsaw ticket. And I had 20 land care members contact me within, you know, 24 hours saying, oh, can we do that, but we want it to include felling because we're, we're really looking at this agroforestry stuff and things like that. And it was really informative to me. Um, and to me, this is why, why you're doing it, really, because you're trying to hear what people are, people are saying to you. So the group is, is pretty amazing, and groups like this one in particular, um, for some reason, this is the kind of space where my community in the Southern Otways communicates, you know? Um, it could be anywhere. You might be, if you were to take an example of, say, um, Ag Chat Oz. Has anyone heard of Ag Chat Oz? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's the, um, the great Twitter sort of environment where, um, at, at designated times, people hold a conversation on Twitter about an issue of relevance to, to agriculture. Uh, you know, it might be rural mental health, it, it might be technical, it might be economic, um, whatever it might be. And then people get on their smartphones at a certain time with the hashtag AgChatOz, people search the hashtag and they follow a conversation. Um, and from what I understand, the reason that this is successful is because there are a lot of farmers out there who are not going to go home and log into Facebook at night, but they will sit there with their smartphones on their tractors out in the paddock. Now, in the Otways, um, the paddocks are like this. So when you're in your tractor, you're just largely focusing on not dying. And um, you also have no mobile phone reception. So Twitter... Yeah, that's right. There is no top of the hill. The tops of the hills are this big. It's all slope. <laughs> so, um, so Twitter is not... Nobody in the Otways uses Twitter, basically. I just don't know. I, I, I know the guys who run Otway Forest Shiitake, which is a great little business that communicates with Melbourne, they're on Twitter. That's it. Um, but mostly, there's a lot of people on Facebook. Yeah, these little bite-sized things, they're not big downloads, they're easy to use. It's, it's a quick communication. So, um, so this is the space that, that we largely use now to collect information. And for us, social media has become a lot less about telling people what we're doing and a lot more about just shutting up and listening to what people are telling us. And it has informed our strategic plan. It has informed our annual report. It has informed um, all of the major grants we've gone for this year because we're now hearing what people are saying more. And when we are meeting people on the ground, 
uh, outside of these spaces, we're more likely to have a, a handle on the kinds of conversations that they want to have with us. So, so to me, this is, this is the real value. Um, I'm going to talk very briefly about Twitter. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I don't actively manage our Twitter account much at all. Oh, look, there's Ag Chat Oz. There you go. Um, largely because it's a time issue, obviously. You, you can't do everything, so you, so you work the spaces that are relevant to you. As I say, our Twitter account is, is attached to our, um, to our Facebook account. So every time I post to Facebook, something goes out to Twitter, uh, and I don't have to, have to do it. Yeah, Tom's been tweeting. Um, so, so, so that's it, basically. That's Twitter. Um, we are largely followed by journalists uh, and politicians and agencies on Twitter. Um, and, and very occasionally, I get a phone call. That someone's come across a story that we've run through our website or our Facebook account. Because I should say that when we post on our, Facebook, uh, on our website, I also post a link to the Facebook page. Uh, because we have lots of people who follow us on Facebook who are just town residents um, and they're not subscribers to the Landcare website but they just want to keep up with news. So everything that goes uh, on our website is fed out to Facebook and then automatically out through Twitter. So yeah, very occasionally someone rings us and says, oh, we're from the Collar Herald and we heard about blah, can we do a, do a story on you? Um, I, um, personally, I have no talent for Twitter. Um, I've just, I, I just don't quite understand it. So I, I'm not the best person to speak about this, um, but it is, um, it is another potentially quite powerful tool. And I, I think the success of AgChat Oz really demonstrates that in the right environment, it's, it's just a really great way to communicate. Um, I'm going to um, finish up with a discussion about one of the things that we've been trying recently in the Southern Otways. Um, look, like I'm sure most of the land care groups around, um, our network suffers from, uh, shall we say, poor recruitment, poor succession planning, uh, lack of volunteers. Um, our, the way that our committee works is that we've got our four land care groups. Uh, two members from each of those groups comprises the committee of management. The committee of management meets monthly. Uh, we also have a, a second committee, the major committee really, called Projects and Funding, which, uh, which are our technical, technical support, basically, for the project. Uh, they also meet once a month, and they review all the projects across the entire network area. And again, that's one representative from each group. Um, the problem we have, uh, and this is not a slight on our committee of management at all, the problem we have is that not much gets out from that committee. So they come, they sit in the meeting, and they, they talk about their six individual interests, but they're not sending that information back to their community, and their community isn't sending information in with them either. So we're really struggling to, to, build, to, to build some sense of what's out there. Um, our committee of management meetings can get very um, feisty, shall we say. Um, we are a very diverse community. And in fact, I remember <laughs> meeting with a, a woman from state government once who said, oh, yes, communities are the old ways. She said, you're um, really independent, aren't you? <laughs> uh, which was, of course, a euphemism for highly argumentative and barely law-abiding. Um, and, and it is largely true. And interestingly, I went back and said this to, um, to quite a few people, and they went, oh, that's a